What's going on everyone? This is Dom and today I'm going to tell you the story on how I got scammed buying a car with my phone. And I'm also going to tell you what you can do if you ever find yourself in this situation. So sit back, relax, because uh, this is an adventure. So back in January of this year, 2022, I decided to sell my current used vehicle. I bought it in 2019, brand new, and it had acquired quite the value. As many of you know, the values have been rising for quite some time um, lately just because of shortages of whatever. But the value had gone up enough to where it was like, I should probably sell this and get into something different. So being a tech forward person, I thought it would be pretty cool to check out some of the app based dealerships out there. And I'm sure you guys have seen commercials for them or heard ads or whatever. There's a lot of them like Vroom, etc. But the one that I specifically chose to take a look at was Carvana. Once I got in that app, like everything from, from that point, from all of the app based kind of workings of the whole thing, it was pretty flawless. It was pretty smooth, almost too good to be true. Well, kind of too good to be true, but we'll explain that in a little bit. So from the time I opened the app to getting a quote for my car, which they never changed that quote, mind you, um, all the way to them picking it up and handing over money for the car, everything was flawless. And I mean, they really have that process down to a T. I was pretty impressed by the whole thing. I also decided to use them as the people I was going to buy my next car from. So they made the process pretty easy, right? They pick up the old car, they drop off the new car, and it was just as seamless as that. Literally, it took me like maybe 10 minutes to get through the entire process within their app. It was pretty smooth and seamless, but unfortunately, this story doesn't end well. Essentially what happened, or allegedly what happened, is that Carvana sold me a vehicle that they did not have the title in hand for. At least that's my claim here. I have to say that probably to cover my butt in this situation, but that obviously causes a lot of problems when it comes to registering your vehicle, right? Now, for the most part, when you buy a car, the dealership takes care of the first registration and they drop off a car with a temporary tag, which did happen for me. I had a temporary tag on there just fine. No problems with that. As you'll learn, eventually that temporary tag would come to expire with no word, just crickets from Carvana. Now an entire month had passed since I got the car and time was ticking on that temporary tag. It was a 45 day tag that they initially gave me that was going to eventually expire because I had never received a license plate. I had nothing to be able to legally drive this car after that point. So I started emailing them and calling them every single day until finally one of the representatives that I had been escalated to let it slip that they didn't have the title. And that's where I get my claim from anyways, is just from their own words. Um, so I did do all the follow up as promised and the update from the titles team is that they are still actively working to acquire the title. So they still don't have the current title for the vehicle. Correct. Now, a couple of months would pass for me still not having registration. I got another temporary tag from them, but in my state anyways, you're allowed two temporary tags per car, like per VIN number, per owner. And that I was at that limit now. And I did come into contact with some very helpful representatives a couple of months down the road. But after that second temporary tag expired, I was stuck with no way to legally drive this car that I'm supposed to have purchased. So at this point, I was left with no other alternative but to take matters into my own hands, right? From a legal perspective, because that's what you do when companies try to screw you over. And well, I tried to do just that. But as far as contracts go, in the contract for the car purchase, it says that there is an arbitration clause so that you cannot take them to court. Now you have to opt out of that arbitration clause, but honestly, I've purchased so many cars in the past and never had a problem with the dealership not having an, an adequate title or a title in hand to be able to uh, register my vehicle that I would have never thought something like this would ever come up. Now with the whole arbitration thing, that just means that you can't take them to court. It doesn't mean that you're totally screwed in terms of being being able to get your money back or get out of a messy situation that you're in. But 
it does make it a little more in their favor because it's a third party arbitration company that they've chosen and it's not like a court of law where you know a judge will hear the case and kind of decide what's fair for both parties. What's even crazier about this whole situation is after I started looking into the Carvana app and everything associated with the sales that they do, because they only do sales online and in the app. They don't actually have a physical location where you can go buy cars. They've actually done this to a lot of people all across the country and have actually had temporary bans placed on their sales in several states because of this. They are one of the fastest growing used car dealerships in the country. Carvana. 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 Carvana involving people who have purchased a used car from the company. The state of Florida has filed an administrative complaint for taking more than 30 days to turn over the titles to several different car buyers. They had their dealer's license revoked? Yeah, they certainly did, Angela. He paid in full for this Subaru 11 months ago, but he still doesn't own it. Carvana is making headlines again, and the Office of Illinois Secretary of State Police, they are fed up with Carvana breaking the law by delaying title transfers in their state. In a statement to contact Denver 7, Carvana did not respond to that allegation, but said they were working with the customer, a customer who sees a different kind of car buying in his future. Run away from these people at all costs. And this isn't just something that's affecting people's daily lives. I mean, these accusations really lead to them breaking civil laws, at least in the state of Arizona, as a statute reads, a dealer or manufacturer shall not offer for sale or sell a motor vehicle trailer or semi-trailer until the dealer or manufacturer has obtained a certificate of title to the motor vehicle trailer or semi-trailer, except that a certificate of title is not required for a new motor vehicle sold by the manufacturers to dealers. There have been a lot of people that just kind of roll over and deal with the situation and not be able to drive the vehicle that they were purchasing, let alone still having to pay payments on it if they chose to go a route where they got a loan from the company. And let me just say this here, um, the loan company that they do use is actually a sister company to Carvana. So if you're in this situation where you are actually having to make payments on a vehicle, and you can't drive that vehicle, guess who benefits from you making those payments? The loan company that Carvana is a sister company with. Seems interesting, right? I will say also that Carvana did try to buy my silence slightly by giving me $250 a week in compensation for transportation, but that would not even close to pay for a rental car. Okay, so what are your options if you ever find yourself in this situation? Because I, fortunately was able to get out of this and I'll explain more on that here shortly, but what are the options that you have? Well, the very first thing that I did, at least in my state, is I filed what is called a title complaint with the Department of Transportation. And this lets the state know that the dealer sold a car and has yet to produce the required documents that allow me to register the vehicle. I was also able to learn from the uh, Department of Transportation here when I filed that complaint that they hadn't had any title come across their desk at all for this car. And at this point, there had been nothing from Carvana sending them a title to get anything worked out, which is allegedly a lie that I caught them in. So this title complaint gave me a 90 day permit to be able to drive the car around legally without having to worry about getting pulled over because I didn't have valid plates, all the temporary tags had expired, etc., which was pretty nice. But like I said, I did catch them in an alleged lie um, about this whole title thing because, well, I actually filed with the Better Business Bureau and the Attorney General um, of my state because that actually helped push along everything a little bit more quickly. And I also did file a letter to Carvana directly that is called a claim notice. And it's all in the contract basically that says, this is kind of the steps that you have to take if you want to pursue any course of action against them for a breach of contract or anything like that. So in the letter responding to my attorney general complaint, Carvana got on that really quickly, might, might I add. They haven't really been saying much to me the entire time, not giving me information, keeping me in the dark, but they got on that attorney general response real quick saying that they had a discrepancy in the title that they had received. Um, and you know, I, I know for a fact at least according to what the Department of Transportation told me, that I would not have been able to file a title complaint against them if 
they had a title. So like I said, I read in the contract that I was able to send Carvana a letter basically demanding that they kind of reverse everything, right? Um, give me back what I gave them, I give them back the car, etc. And well, that pretty much almost all happened except for the fact that they had already sold my car by the time we got up to this point. And mind you, we are in like late, late April, early May at this point when all of this is going down now. You see, now I'm not just some bumbling idiot that they sold a car to. I look like I'm somebody with legal representation, which makes all the difference when you're working with companies that are allegedly screwing you over. From the moment I sent that letter and contacted the attorney general, it was approximately three short weeks and the entire situation was resolved, like completely. But what happened here? What changed here? Well, what changed is, like I said, before I was an idiot, now I'm somebody that actually knows a thing or two about what they're doing with this whole situation. So they kind of have to respond to all of these accusations. I mean, at this point, we're getting into legal territory with the attorney general because they do take those things seriously. I know a lot of people kind of underestimate attorney general letters and things like that. But honestly, if you have a problem with a company, file with the attorney general in your state, and that will make things go much, much quicker. Another thing here that changed and that you can do is, well, things seemed a little too good to be true from the get-go. Now, I'm not saying that everybody will have a bad experience with Carvana, but my experience and dozens of other people across the country have had a very, very sour experience like this. And I think that part of the problem is that they're just buying and selling cars so quick that sometimes they forget to make sure they have the proper documentation. Now, this is just a theory of mine. I don't know if any of this is real, but I assume that might have been the case, but that still doesn't excuse them from doing what they did to me or to other people out there. Also, make sure that you opt out of any arbitration agreements in your contracts. You always should have the ability to opt out. And like I said before, I was like, I've bought cars before. This isn't a big deal. They're just gonna drop off the car. They dropped off the car, everything was good. Well, I wish in hindsight that I had opted out of that arbitration agreement because it would have made things a lot more easier, in, in my opinion anyways, to just be able to file a lawsuit and be like, hey, you know, shut up or pay up or, <laughs> or something of that combination. And if you find yourself in this situation, everything that I did could very well apply to you. Now, this isn't legal advice or anything like that. I'm not a lawyer, but I will say that what I did in terms of Better Business Bureau, they responded, Attorney General responded really quick and sending them that claim notice letter, which was um, very much detailed in my contract and I got a free consultation with a lawyer. Doing all these things will better your chances to get out of a situation like this. And you know what? I don't necessarily blame like the fact that I bought it through an iPhone for this, but I definitely got scammed buying a car with my iPhone. And I think that Apple needs to take a look at some of these apps out there that are doing this whole thing because like, I don't know, reputation is everything, right? And if somebody that was not as informed as me bought a car with their iPhone, they might think all these car apps in the app store are bad or Apple is allowing companies to scam customers via their iPhone apps, you know what I mean? And so that's how it could be perceived by people. And I'm not saying that that's definitely the case. I'm not saying that everybody who buys from this company is getting scammed, but I'm saying there's a lot of people out there that are greatly affected by issues like this. And it's definitely best to make sure that you try to cover your butt in pretty much all situations surrounding large purchases like this. And I hope that this is helpful to somebody out there because I wanted to put this out into the universe because you know what, I've, I contacted news stations and stuff and after I got my situation resolved, they didn't even care to do stories on how to help people resolve this issue for themselves. Specifically, uh, the, a local news channel out here, Channel 3, um, I had contacted with them. They wanted nothing to do with the story after it was resolved. And I, I get it to an extent, 
but there are a lot of people. So here's my um, throwing my hat in the circle to help out anybody who might be affected by this. Hopefully that's not you. Hopefully it hasn't been you, but let me know your thoughts and everything down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up button. And if you're new around here, please feel free to subscribe to the channel. We do lots of tech reviews here and stuff like that. It's lots of fun. So um, thank you so much for watching everyone. I really do appreciate it. Once again, this has been Dom and I'll catch you in the next video. Thank you.